Happy Friday, guys. Um, this is another video with myself, um, Yemi Babatundi, and my um, fellow um, collaborator, um, Emperor Michael. You're good, Michael? All good? Happy Fridays? I am fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. The week's gone fast. Um, you know, happy New Year to everybody, and I've had a good start to the week. Yourself? Yeah, I've had a good start to the week. It's It's been an excellent year so far. Yeah, definitely. Me too, me too. Can't complain. It's been a fast as well. Fast and smooth. The first week of January, first week of the new year. It's been fast and smooth. Can't, can't wait for the weekend. <laughs> can't wait for the weekend. Anyways, I've got a couple of topics that I'd like to discuss today regarding you know, the you know the wonderful world of boxing. First of all, did you watch the Ortiz fight? Ortiz Martin fight, oh, Charles Martin. What did you think of it if you did watch it? Um, I didn't watch it live, but I've I've seen it on YouTube since. So yeah, what do I think of it? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Ortiz is slowing down or if Charles Martin is better than people say or if it's a combination of both. Uh, I, mean, I, I was thinking Ortiz is probably going to win quite comfortably. I mean, it's boxing. You can never say for sure because if, if it was as easy as that, you know, when people say I'm a boxing expert, not me, but, you know, we get people in boxing that are so sure about people like Steve Bunce. They're so sure about fights and so on. But if it was that easy, everyone, everyone would be millionaires because then you just bet on all the fights, wouldn't you? So, yeah, boxing could be unpredictable. I didn't see the fight going like that. And, yeah, Ortiz just came out came yeah. up with a great yeah, Matt, you know, Charles Matt did a lot better expected. He actually knocked down, you know, Ortiz, I think, twice, you know. He actually, do, you think, do you think Ortiz has passed? Do you think he's actually, you know... Um, Five times caught, caught, um, caught up to him and he's actually, you know, past his, uh, his best now, Luis Ortiz. Oh, yeah, he's, he's definitely past his best, but it could be a combination of both. Uh, maybe Charles Martin is better than we thought. But, and obviously you've got to bring Ortiz's age into account, you know. Okay, no, yeah, we, we be, yeah, on paper it's 42 years old, but really he's actually probably 52 or maybe 60. You don't know. With these green boxes, you know, these boxing, you know, their birth certificate is not, you know, on record like we are, like it's in the UK. So, you know, Ortiz is definitely older than we think he is. And, you know, do you think, um, what, what do you think, do you think Ortiz should um, continue boxing or do you think he's got he's a gatekeeper now or what do you think he should do next? I think he's a gatekeeper, I think. But it's a difficult one to say because you never know. On the one hand, I'm sure there's people out there he can still beat. Okay. But then do I do I think he can beat the top guys, the Fury, the Joshua, the Wilder? He just it looks like he's slowed down. So I, I just it's gonna be difficult for him to beat a lot of people. Do I think he can beat Derek Chisora? He could beat him. But I'd probably I'd probably say Derek beats him. So I just think yeah. Yeah, you're, just, you're slow. You're slowing down now. You're not. You're not what you were before. And uh, yeah, if I was him, maybe you should retire before you get hurt. Yeah, I, I think. I think that, it, it, go on, go on, sir. I was saying. I think Dr. Dirk also fight Ortiz next as a farewell fight because you know Ortiz is a big fight. He would do big good numbers and he'd be a, like a good, a winnable fight for you know, Chisora. So that's what I think it should happen. If Chisora wants to fight again, you should fight Luis Ortiz and call it a day. You know, as a farewell, you know, swan song. Yeah, a problem with a lot of boxers, they go on too long. And someone like Luis Ortiz, I don't I don't understand this thing. Why do fighters, so many fighters, not speak English? I don't understand that. I, I speak more than one language and I can articulate very well. If you're if you're a boxer or if you're doing any sort of job in the UK, the USA, or also let me rephrase it. Any country that you work in, I believe that you should learn the, the national language. Yeah. You know, whether it's China, Russia, Japan, Portugal. I don't understand why people don't learn the national language of a country that you're working in, because it, it makes your life complicated. So Louis Ortiz, I mean, can he read contracts? Can he, you know, how does he know what he's signing? Um, and what I'm saying, the reason I'm bringing it up, it's like... They don't really have common sense. So it's where we can see that he should retire. A lot of them just don't really, it's like you're not leaving Yeah, the in this autistic situation, I don't think he's made enough money to retire. Even though he's had those fights with Wilder, I, don't, I think he doesn't have the, the, the retirement funds. So I think he's going to 
boxing for long, for maybe at least, at least another five years potentially, because I don't think Ortiz has made enough money to retire from what I can see. But, then, but, that's, but that's my point, because if you can't speak English, I'm assuming logically, obviously I understand you can get people to translate for you, I understand that. But if you can't be bothered to speak English, what 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 job are you going to do next? Like, you know, and with me, if I had his money, because I can speak English, I, I'd invest the money, I'd buy this, I'd buy that, I'd buy property. And also, I'm not saying he can't, but I wouldn't keep boxing if I was in his position. I'd say, you know what, I'm, I'm not what I was before and I'd leave it alone. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of fighters, it's not just him though, a lot of fighters, you know, they go... Yeah, I potentially. Yeah, potentially. Lack of English, of understanding of the English language, potentially leaves a vulnerable to be, you know, to be, you know, used and abused by promoters. Probably, you know, you know, being, you know, a lot of his money probably was stolen by dodgy contracts. And he's probably not aware of it because of lack of, you know, understanding of the English language. Probably doesn't understand how to read the contract. So, hence why he's probably still fighting on to, you know, to make more money for retirement. Yeah, but these boxers, it's just they need to. It's up to them, you know, but. If I was going to go to Cuba on holiday, forget forget working there. But if I was, I speak little bits of Spanish, but if I was going there for two weeks holiday, I'd make sure I learn as much Spanish as possible. So I, I just don't understand. And that's just holiday. Never mind if I was going to work there. So I just don't really understand that mentality. The thing about it's OT, to, yeah, sorry, yeah. the thing about OTs and PBC fight, I understand why they're so low to our him. I, I never saw why I lose OT 10 and 5 million off the fight him. Joshua, you know, back in um, in in your in, uh, in the Madison Square Garden fight back in 2019, when he fought Ruiz instead, because that's a five million dollar offer. That's, that's the biggest payday. I know so while he's fought it down, because I'm pretty sure he made way less than he fought Wilder in the rematch. I'd say I don't. I remember. I remember that. I don't know the details. I haven't got any inside knowledge. But I can say boxers are generally boxers are very easy to control and manipulate. Yeah. And I'd say the the general perception I get, Al Heyman doesn't really want to work with Eddie Hearn. So I'm assuming, to the best of my knowledge, that Al Heyman just he told him whatever. No, you know, don't do this. If you and I, he just basically manipulated him into not taking the fight because. I'll give you a quick example. If you look at what Leonard Ellaby said about Eddie Hearn recently, yeah. he's like saying, oh yeah, you know, um, if I see Eddie Hearn, I'm going to punch him on site. I'm going to do, do this and do that. But that that mentality, I mean, well, Eddie Hearn's like almost half your age, almost twice your size. And, you know, you're not a fighter. And then you're talking about, I want to, well, you're talking about physical assault, but that's a crime. You understand, like you're saying you want to physically assault Eddie Hearn. Well, it's illegal. And, well, obviously Eddie Hearn's not just going to stand there and let you assault him. So if I saw Leonard Ellaby, I'd say to him, I don't really get where this energy is coming. Like, I don't understand that mentality. Okay, if you really want to, if you've really got such a problem with him, well, okay, if you really want to punch, just call him out in the ring, like tell him to get in the ring. But... Why do you have such energy towards what? Because Eddie Hearn said Tank Davis doesn't sell, you know. So what I'm trying to get at, from what I can see, a lot of these Americans, like, they just don't like Eddie for whatever reason. And so it's, it's politics. So for whatever reason, they said, you know what, like Al Heyman said, like, I'm not going to let Luis Ortiz fight Joshua, which, you know, okay, but even now, it's like Dylan White, I, um, I saw I saw some comments that Dean White made recently, and it's like they're telling Dylan White not to fight Joshua, and you know Dean White saying, "Oh, eighty twenty isn't good enough." Uh, these are just silly comments. If I was advising Dylan White, I tell, I tell him take the take the fight, but they're telling him not to. So I'd say it's similar to that. What what annoys me is that Ortiz potentially, or, or him as well, potentially could have ruined um, Ortiz's you know, best chance of retirement because those would have been big payments. Imagine if Ortiz knocked out Joshua, you, you made at least 10 million or more in a rematch because I think Ortiz at a time could have been Joshua and knocked him out, you know, especially you know, back in 2019. But now Ortiz not going to get those big payments anymore, especially you know, at, at elite level. And he's probably going to retire, you know, fight longer than he needed to. 
But as I, yeah, as I just said, but people in boxing, they don't really... The egos get involved and people don't make rational choices. I think if it was at that point, I think Ortiz, yeah, he would have had a good... He would have had a very good chance of beating Joshua and he probably would have beaten him. But as I said, but pe- people don't really make rational choices sometimes in boxing or in life. As I told you, like right now, Dylan White has been offered 20% to fight Tyson Fury. To me, I think that's a good deal. I'll say take it. So I I say it's similar to me, because obviously you you know I've sparred I've sparred Tyson Fury before on camera. Dylan White, I've I've trained in the same gym. We've never sparred, but we've almost sparred. And I'd say the same sort of uh, example with me. If I got a, if I got the opportunity to spar these guys, or I forget sparring because people might not understand what I'm saying. If I got the opportunity to interview Joshua Fury, Dylan White, if I got the opportunity to do like a one hour interview, I take it. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't try to negotiate. If they said. Yeah, come to Manchester or come to Liverpool or come to Scotland. If it was come to Japan, I uh, just there's too much like to fly to another country is too much effort. But if it's come to J- Scotland or come to Ireland to interview me, uh, we'll, we'll let you interview Dylan White for an hour. If it's somewhere like Portugal or Italy, flights are only thirty pound. I'd go. I'd I'd take. I'd. I'd I take the opportunity to change my life because if you gave me like an hour long interview with these sort of people, a lot of people in boxing would watch it because I'd I'd come with a diff a very different kind of interview, and then I I can inter- I could interview other people because I'd say look at this interview I did the other day with Joshua, I wouldn't try to mess you I'll just take it, so I think that's a good example with Dylan White, like this is the best offer like it's it's the best offer you've ever got if I was just take it stop trying to be clever and this and that because you, you're 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 missing the opportunity how what do you think of my example do you think it makes sense yeah like you know one life opportunity you know make use of it and if you make use of it and if you, and if you do well then the sky's the limit if, if you know if um all t- like, like back to all team Joshua all teams actually beat Joshua back in 2019 and you probably made maybe 10 million or more and setting up you know a bit you know money for life but now he did take those, you know, Joshua fight. Now he's forced to, you know, work beyond, you know, you know, he needs to, and it takes him more damage. And he probably doesn't have the money to retire. So, and you know, with White as well, White is potentially, you know, the biggest payday. I guess the best heavyweight in the world. If he, he plays his cards right and beats, you know, pulls the upset, you know, this guy's limit. He's the best heavyweight in the world. Biggest payday. Potentially make twenty million minimum or more in the rematch. Because that, that fight could be a stadium fight easily. He could do ninety fights at Wembley. That fight. Yeah, it's massive. It's massive in the UK. Massive. But as I said, there's uh, there's no need for me to talk at length about this. But people don't make rational choices. You know, just, uh, to me, just take the fight. Twenty percent. You're gonna get more money than you've ever got. It's a massive fight. S- same thing. Wilder. Wilder's what... well, panel was offered. Was it 120 million or 50 million, something like that, against you know Joshua? You know, from disputed. And then, you know, they kept them, you know, back and forth, you know, Shell think it offered them 50 million, then apparently Eddie Hearn offered them 120 million, 100 million, you know, 50 million per fight, 50 million in the first fight, 50 million in the rematch. Luckily, Wilder made his money, you know, with the Titan trilogy, the Fury trilogy, but Wilder could have been even more rich before AJ from the spirit. And, and, AJ, and definitely Wilder back then could have knocked AJ out easily. Uh, so again, he could have made more and more money than he would have with Fury you know, by fighting AJ from the spirit. But people in boxing, they don't, a lot of the time, they're not rational. They've got egos. They don't, people like Eddie Hearn and Shelley Finkel, they try to control everything. So they're not, people don't make rational choices. That's all I can say. And the easiest example, like I say, Dylan White, just take the Fury fight. Like if they said to me, Michael, do you want to come to Manchester to interview Fury for two hours? I'll, I'll do it. I'll take the day off work, even though it's going to cost me. I was going to say, so I'll do it. Because if I get a two hour, two hour interview with Fury and we put it out on his Twitter, f- thousands of people are going to watch it. 
50,000, 100,000, it, it would be a very interesting interview, you know, because I'll come at it from a different angle. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't got an ego. If you talk about Coogan Cassius, it's not my place to say I'm a better interviewer than Coogan Cassius. I'm not going to say that. But I'd say him and me are different people. My interview would be a lot more, it'd be a lot more challenging. It'd be a lot more interesting. I'd ask stuff about drugs. I'd ask stuff about, um, what's the most interesting thing I could ask Fury? I'd, I'd ask him about Daniel Kinahan. So I'm not going to say I'm a better interviewer than Coogan, but I haven't got an ego. But it would be very different watching me. You'd get a very different kind of interview. And in my opinion, a lot of people would watch it in boxing. And then I could start messaging people. Hey, uh, Ebony Bridges. Hey, Katie Taylor. Hey, um, uh, Anthony Crawler. Can I get an interview with you? And people are more likely to say yes, because they're going to know who I am. So that's what I'm saying about Dylan White. Just fight him. Don't get me wrong. I think Fury will beat him. But I don't think it's as one-sided as people think it is. I think he can beat Fury. I think Fury's beaten, I mean, he's beaten the same guy now, uh, what, last two years or whatever, he's boxed the same guy. And I'm not, don't get me wrong, Wilder's quicker and more explosive than White, but it doesn't mean White can't beat Fury. I don't think Wilder's got the same toughness. and he's, I'm not saying he's not tough, but he's just, he's a different kind of fighter to White. So I, I think White's got a, 30% chance of beating Fury. What do you think? I mean, he's of probably the gonna... What do you think the rumored um partly Fury is, is gonna offer White or made an offer to White a big offer in Saudi Arabia? Partly one of the Saudi um, princes has is, is, is made a huge offer for that fight to be held in Saudi Arabia the free white uh, match. I've heard of that partly it's meant to be a you know potential big you know um an uh, offer to White to fight Fury in Saudi Arabia. Well, as I said, um, I think we've spoken enough about this fight now, but also I don't know anything about that. And all I can say is a massive fight. And if I was Dylan White, just take the fight. It's a winnable fight. I don't think he'll win it, but he can win it. He's got a good chance. And win it and you're going to become the main man. Why are you, you know... Okay, so if I interview Fury, I, I said two hours... If they gave me, uh, we're going to give you 10 minutes with Fury, I'll take it. Because in 10 minutes, I can, I, can, I can ask enough interesting questions where it's different. It's something to watch. But if I get Fury on my channel, I'm sure you'll agree, a lot of people are going to notice that. So I'm, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to say, oh, but why does Coogan get more time? Yeah, but that's because Coogan's earned it. You know, so when Dylan White's, oh, but why does Fury get more money? Yeah, that's because Fury's earned it. He's beat, he's beat Klitschko, Wilder. He beat Chisora twice. Chisora, who you struggled with. So just, just take it and move on with your life. Also, but, you know, part, yeah, also apparently, yeah, um, Fury's meant to fight on March 26, but no points being out. So lastly, do you think any chance that... Possibly, if you could fight White next in March on the twenty sixth, you know, no date. That's been that's been you know been rumored to be Fury's next fight date. I reckon. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. So they want him to fight by by end of March. But also, as I said, my guess is as good as yours. If if White wants to keep dragging his feet, you're going to get left behind. You know. Because they don't need you. Like, they'll just go fight. Because that's the way boxing is, isn't it? Yeah. It's like they'll just go fight somebody else. So. Hopefully we should ha have, you know, some more news because um, is it January 11 when purse bids, you know, go to, and get into place, purse bids. So there should be some type of, you know, hopefully some type of more, like, more news or conclusions by next week once the purse bids, you know, get announced and we see we see who's made, you know, the, you know, the big offer in terms of purse bids and who will have, will it be in BT, will it be on that SPN, will it be on um, The Zone? I'll be honest, obviously, I'm answering your questions because we're having a conversation, but to me, I don't really care what they do. Like, if I was to, like, fight him, don't fight him. You know, last thing I said, like, Dylan White, I mean, look, you got knocked out by Povetkin recently. I mean, if you're too dumb to realise that you can get beaten by anybody, I mean, if Povetkin could knock you out, you've got all these people coming up. You've got the Yoka, you've got Martin Bacoli, you've got... Huey Fury, who else can I think of? 
Hergovic. I mean, if Povetkin can knock you out, like any of these other guys can beat you. So I right, keep keep doing what you're doing. If you want to hang around and mess around, but if he loses to somebody else, then that's that fight is gone for good. And if he loses to somebody else, like I'll, I'll say openly, I'm, I'll laugh. I'll say I told you so. Just take the fight, man. Stop, stop taking the mick. Just take it. You know, so, um, and and the thing is, a lot of fans are turning on White because we like stop. I don't. I've got no more sympathy for you. I don't want to hear this rubbish about oh Dylan White. He hasn't got a title shot for a thousand days. Yeah. The opportunity is there. That's like me. Like I said, it's like me complaining about if I got the chance to interview uh, Mike Tyson. Who's the biggest person in boxing for me to interview? So if they, I said it's probably got to be Mike Tyson. So if they said to me, "Oh, Tyson's busy. Right, we'll let you interview him for five minutes," then that's all you've got. That's like me arguing and this and that and, oh, I, I want an hour. Listen, if you offer me five minutes with, with Mike Tyson, I will take the five minutes. Forget five minutes. You offer me two minutes, I'll take two minutes. <laughs> just just stop being eager. And the thing about Kubrick, and I'm going to uh, see, this is why I'm a very intelligent guy. So I'm not even intelligent. I'm a very honest person. Krugan has worked hard to get to his position. So, of course, Krugan deserves more access to people than I do. Of course, I've got no issue with that. But as time goes on, I'm going to get more and more access. Or well, that's like me saying, oh, yeah, but Krugan gets an hour. Yeah, but he's worked for it. So when you say Tyson Fury gets more money than me, yeah, but Dylan White, you ain't beating nobody. This guy's beating Klitschko Wilder. He beat Chisora much easier than you did. You're not you're not as credible. Go ask the fans who they take more seriously. Forget boxing fans. The majority the majority of people consider Fury the number one in the world. We don't consider Dylan White the number one. Like you're just coming off a knockout against Povetkin. You're not like humble yourself. I don't like the word humble. I'm not going to say humble yourself, but be more honest about your place in the pecking order. You got knocked out by Joshua, and you got knocked out by Povetkin. So, you know, I've, I've said enough about that fight. I know. Back to, I was going to say, back to um, Ortiz. What do you think of um, Ortiz denying the, the, ABF, the ABF eliminated Hergovic, Hergovic um, you know, Luth Ortiz, as well as um, Joe Depart, not finding Hergovic for the IBF, you know, final eliminator. What's your opinion about that? Is Hergovic the biggest man of boxing? Because 100%, I don't think Luth Ortiz, to me, is the biggest man of boxing like he was before. For me, you know, it seems like, you know, uh, fighting to work, you know, is Hergovic just, you know, boogie man now? Is he afraid now? Is no one fighting him? Why is nobody, nobody fighting him? Because um, Mike Hunter avoided him, and now it's Luis Ortiz avoiding him, and now Joseph Park is not fighting him for the RBF Eliminator. Do you know what Parker's doing? Is Parker, is, is Parker fighting Hergovic? No, he's, he's apparently he's, he's, um, not, he's, he's told not to fight him for the IBF Eliminator either now. Okay, I didn't know that. In Lu- I know about Luis Ortiz not doing it. I'd say in Ortiz's case, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, look, fighters don't really fear fighters, but what was I say? Sometimes they do. But sometimes it could be the team. So I'm, I'm guessing they don't think he beats Hergovic. And for me, I don't really think he's going to beat Hergovic. I just think it's too much at his age. And as we saw in his last fight, you know, he was getting nailed by Martin. He was just getting schooled, you know. So, yeah, I'm guessing they don't think he can beat Hergovic. So his I'm team guessing, probably... The only way it makes sense for me, if Ortiz fights Andy Ruiz for more money, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. If Ortiz doesn't fight Andy Ruiz, I don't see where he goes from now. Yeah. Neither do I. I just think you're not... He just, he's just... He's... I'm not going to say... It's not... I'm not going to say he's too old. It's not the age, but when you look at him physically, but your performance has gone way down. It's it's not, you're slower, you're getting hit. So I, I, it's just going to be difficult for him to beat a lot of these guys. I remember when George Foreman fought Michael Moore. Michael Moore was just schooling him. He was beating him up and he was hitting him at will. George Foreman is lucky it, to me, it was a lucky shot. Like, yeah, it was. Michael Moore was switched off, and Foreman was able to land that knockout shot. So I say it's the same with Ortiz. If he can nail you with that one shot, he can get you. 
But then the thing is, with with Charles Martin, he probably wasn't expecting that. He probably thought, oh, I'm too good, I'm too... But now that people have seen that fight, people are going to know, anybody that fights Ortiz, they're going to know, he's slow, I can beat him, but if he can land, he can, if he can nail me with one, you know, he hurt Wilder, he knocked out Martin, people are going to be aware of that shot. So it's going to be difficult to beat people like Hergovic and Parker and, you know. So I can only assume they're just going to try and get all these fights. They're confident he can win. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so um, if no one fights Hergovic, should I be a preliminary? 100% should he be um, elevated to IBF, you know, uh, mandatory? Um, I think he should do. No, no one really fight her rich for the IBF eliminated, then they shouldn't be making mandatory, mandatory, mandatory for the IBF title. So the winner of um, AJ and Usyk then should fight her rich for the IBF title, 100%. Do you think so? No, I, I, I agree. I agree. I think, you know, it's not his fault if people can't fight him, but... Just w- wait till I if, I, if I can just start, once I start meeting some of these people, I interviewed Joseph Parker recently, but yeah, next time I meet Joseph Parker, like, I want to find out why these lot don't want to fight him. I mean, maybe, maybe they're not being offered enough money, because that's something people don't always mention, you know, um, it could be that, you know, maybe they're not, maybe Hergovic's promoter, they're not offering enough money, or or yeah, or maybe they don't think they can beat him. Uh, yeah, but if people won't fight him, that's that's not his fault. Absolutely. Anyways, we shall see. We shall, what happens next? We we see what shall, we shall see what happens to her. But hopefully, you get somebody. Well, but you never know. We shall see. Anyway, some sad news in boxing. Um, unfortunately, Callum Johnson not fighting Joel Smith anymore. The fight's been cancelled due to um Callum getting COVID. Have you heard about that? Yeah, I watched a Frank Warren interview recently and. Unfortunately, Cam Johnson's got COVID, therefore he's not fighting him next week. Yeah, I was looking forward to that fight. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, it would have been exciting. Definitely ended up being a knockout. I think Johnson would have been Smith, but unfortunately you won't know now. Hopefully they'll reschedule it, but we shall see. We shall see, hopefully. And also, um, I've heard of um, Kasha Week, um, unfortunately retired now, only 26 years old. You know, Kasha Week, you know, British, you know, prospect. He was meant to be, he's actually retired um, he's, um, recently due to, I think, was it was it a brain scan or? I think actually he retired um, due to, a, was, it, was it to a brain scan? I've heard of that, Kashwick retiring. I don't know the reason, but I, I do, I, I did see it. I know he's retired, but I don't know why. Because yeah, it was actually, it was one of my favourite fighters, you know, my prospect. So it's sad that I heard him retire. Were you, were you keen on Kashwick? Yeah, it was okay. It was a decent fight. Or, but, you know, whatever. I don't know what the reason was, but I'm glad he retired. And I just think it's something boxers can learn from because sometimes retirement is the best option for you because, you know, not everyone's not everyone's going to become a Sugar Ray Leonard or an Aaron Pryor. Like, you know, it's not the easiest sport in the world. And, you know, you look at David Hay, you look at how many injuries he suffered from. I mean, you look at the David Hay Tony Bellew fights. I don't, you know, I don't think anyone believes all this David Hay rubbish he was coming out with about. I'm not going to take any shots at him, but all the stuff he was saying about I'm the new David Hay, I'm version 4.0, 5.0, I'm, I'm eating kangaroo meat now, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm faster than a speeding bullet. Well, obviously, he only took those fights because he was desperate, he needed money. You know, I'm not judging him. I'm not mocking him. And that's just, obviously, he's not the only, there's a lot of people in boxing. I, I think the worst fight of all time, probably Muhammad Ali versus Larry Holmes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, just there's a lot of things, or even Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones. I just, I didn't like that fight, you know. Mostly those guys just probably did it for money. So this, I think sometimes boxers can learn from what Cash Farouk has done. Like, Boxing is not for everyone. Like at some point, it may come to the situation where it's best for you to retire for your own safety. So I'm, I'm glad he has, and I hope more boxers learn from this. Yeah, but yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, boxing is not for everybody. Some boxers are meant to, you know, have glory. Some boxers are meant to not box, you know, you know, 
um, professionally. So unfortunately, some dreams are not meant to be fulfilled. Unfortunately, and you know, maybe you can be, maybe you know, maybe Cash can find a career as a, as a boxing trainer, maybe a promoter, more promoter. Maybe he can still do boxing in other ways. Well, not not a promoter. Promoting's a hard job. I don't think he can do it. I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't. He can become a trainer. He can become a manager, and. I won't say it's unfortunate he's retired. It's not unfortunate, but but you just got to be intelligent in life. So you've got to something a lot of people in boxing don't do. You have to accept the truth. And if you've got certain injury, I don't know what it is. If you've got injuries or what is, whatever's happened to him, you should understand. I should not get in a boxing ring. And I, I'll use David Hay as a good example. I mean, you know, if only, I wish that David Hay had taken his money, like when he beat, so when he fought Klitschko and he knocked out Chisora and so on, he should have taken that money and said, I'm going to set myself up for life, bought some property, set up a business and so on. He should have never got in the ring with Tony Bellew. Because at the time, listen, everyone knew David Hay's leg was done. Like his, his leg was like, yeah, everyone knew it. That was, that was a rumor going around the gyms and so on. And he, David had gone to Germany, he'd, he'd gone abroad or something like that to sort his leg out. But you could see it. You could see as soon as the fight started, like you could see something was up with the leg and especially the rematch. So, you know, who, who's a good example? I was like, let's just say Luis Ortiz. He should not be continuing to fight. He should retire right now. But he's not going to do the it. Best example: somebody you, you, you fought far too long, other than Will Jones. Um, it's to me, Danny Williams. That guy was just um, honestly, um, honestly, that guy. That, that, his career is a tragedy. It's a boxing tragedy, tragedy. Danny Williams. Oh my god! Literally, he was fighting. He retired about two years ago. He was. Oh my! Danny Williams. Jesus, he he can't even talk properly now. Literally. He should, he should have retired when he lost to um, Chisora all those years ago. I don't know. That's, he, he, he was so bad, he had to fight abroad. He couldn't get a license in, in the UK. Warren stopped for promoting him. He knew he was washed up. He thought, you know, in all the Eastern European country that, you know, they'll give you a license to anybody with a pulse. Yeah, but then the problem... Yeah, but that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. And I don't, we, I don't need to keep repeating myself or giving different examples. But, yeah, Danny Williams is a perfect one. You've taken how many losses now, how many... Yeah, but he's fighting in these countries, but you're getting punched in the head. You're getting punched. And, you know, it's like a lot of these fighters, you need to set yourself up while you're boxing. I mean, when you, when you, when he boxed, when he knocked out Mike Tyson, I wasn't, I wasn't old enough. But if you, if you knock out Mike Tyson, it's going to give you a lot of fame. So I'd say at that time, try and set up some sort of business, try and, I've heard that he does bodyguarding. Yeah, but try and get some bodyguard, like get some qualifications, like try and become a bodyguard for the celebrities. Well, think about it. You know, how, you can say, like, because some of these, some of these, you know, like people that have been in the SAS. Yes. Uh, have you seen that program? Uh, was it SAS Who Dares Wins? Is that, is that the one, that, is that the one Tony Bill you did? did? Yes. Yeah, that, yeah, I've seen that one. All right. If you see the guys that were working on that show, these guys were bodyguards for people like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, based on the fact that they were in the SAS, which is, you know, for those of you who don't know, SAS, it's a, a special forces British military unit. So they're getting the job based on, I used to be in the British Army, I was an SAS soldier. All right, so imagine you're Danny Williams. So imagine you go up to Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie. Yeah, you know, I want to be your bodyguard. So if they say to you, well, why are you? Can you imagine if you say, uh, here's a video of me knocking out Mike Tyson? Well, you're, you're telling me he couldn't have got, he couldn't have got, I've never met him, but most heavy, I've, a lot of heavyweights, they're physically big people. Yeah. So I say physically, he's going to, compared to the people in the SAS program, if you look at Ant Middleton, Ant Middleton, Ant Middleton's a small man. He's smallish. I've never met him, but he's sh he's shorter than me. He's more muscular, but he's he's smaller than me. But someone like Danny Williams, you're about six foot away. Like you're a big dude. You're a heavyweight boxer. You imagine if you go up to these celebrities and you've got all the like, here's my CV, here's my qualifications, 
And in terms of like the 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 set the unique selling point, I knocked out Mike Tyson. Drop the mic. Yeah. You, what you're telling me? You're that's telling my pitch. But that's my that's the reason why behind me. And if I ever, if I ever meet him, I mean, just you know what? Yeah, you reminded me of this because I I don't know how to get in touch with him. But someone needs to try and help this dude turn his life around, like match room or something. Like, try and get him some sort of job as a try and help him out, do something. Like go go become a bodyguard to the celebrities or do something. But to keep getting punched in the head. Apparently, like, Danny Williams, apparently there's two things. Apparently, the reason why you fight you, you continue fighting you fight despite him being seriously, seriously washed up, it was because he needed the money to pay for his kids' private school. But that's the only way you I could, heard about that. Yeah. And apparently he did retire and one of his friends set up a GoFundMe page for him to help him, you know, cope, you know, help him, you know, fund his retirement, you know, funds. But again, I don't I guess he, he didn't make, make enough well, he must possibly probably he took advantage of probably blew his, blew his money he made off, you know, but he thought he retired as well for the uh, title, you know, as well. Yes, yes. Probably probably, you know, probably, probably didn't spend it right or probably got took advantage of by promoters or Warren or because you need, you know, he has some paydays, you know, with the, the Tyson win and also the, the quick show, you know, title shot. So, well, all well, I say quickly, I'm going to do my best to try and get in touch with him ASAP. And when I'm next time I meet people like Eddie Hearn, I'm going to talk to them about him. Yeah, but just because you make money, there's a difference between making money and keeping money. Absolutely. And a lot of box, yeah, a lot of boxers, but they just don't come across as. They're very easy to manipulate. And then you've got all these people that you pay for this and that. And I'll tell you one of the most useless jobs in boxing. You know, these publicists, these uh, these people that arrange interviews for fighters, publicists. Yeah. yeah. For me, I think that's the most useless job in boxing. And But then it's like, the thing is, you're paying these people and that's the problem. So it's got things like that is draining your money. Then you've got, I mean, I don't know Danny Williams career is before my time but a lot of fighters that I see but you've got too many people around yeah, big you too many trainers you've got jo- Joshua's the perfect example like you've got all these people around you yeah, I can, hang, I keep it short. I, I remember we were at the I was at I was at the gym recently it's a non-boxing gym and it's got like sauna steam room and I was talking with some of the other guys and we were talking about Joshua Usyk and it's like, you've got all these people around you and this guy and this guy and that guy. But at the end of the day, the conversation we had about Joshua, when you watch the Usyk fight, and I'd say this to Joshua's face, you you just, you bottled it. Like, it's not a, it's not that big a deal. Like, you just, you just I don't want to hear this rubbish. Uh, well, you know, uh, you got to talk to my t- dude. Yeah, like when you were getting punched up by, by Usyk, like, you just, you just didn't want to know. Listen, I know, I know the feeling. I sparred Kel Brook. I didn't want to know. I I I landed a couple of shots on, on Kel Brook. Uh, those were not my best shots. I was holding back. I, I said to myself, it's like I was so nervous of getting, I was I was so nervous of getting hit. I was, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, if it was someone else, if it was someone more my level, you'd see me throw my best shots. But against Kel Brook, I, I thought any minute now he might hit me in the head, you know. And when he started punching me in the body, listen, he didn't. He did not knock me out. I could have continued, but I just watched. Uh, it, it just took the fight out of me. No, I mean he could have knocked me out if he wanted to. But when he when he dropped me, I'd say I was about sixty percent finished. I could have continued, but I just thought he's not playing around now. He dropped me once. I got up. He started going harder. I thought he's just going to keep going. He's not going to let me glass. I know that. So I just thought, uh, just, just he, he took the fire out of me. So this is what I'm saying about Joshua. It's the same thing. I'm not mocking you. I'm not laughing at you. I think he's still a world class fighter. But you know, don't give us all this rubbish. Well, you know, like, I'm going to train with May over now. And it's yeah. But at the end of the day, you just didn't want to know. You just the guy took the fire out of you, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, 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 but I'm, the point I'm making, but you've got all these people around you, but they can't turn. You don't need that many people. Like he hasn't got the same fire that Muhammad Ali had or George Foreman. So that's something you need to work on as a person. Yeah, you don't need ten people. Just have four people in your corner at most. But you got this guy, that guy. You got Robert Smith. You got what's his name? 
you got uh, what's his name, Angel Fernand. You got all these different people. You got sports scientists, and, but sports scientists they can't turn you into a fighter. If you know, you know who James Ali Bashir is. Yes. All you need, if you just have one James Ali Bashir, that guy can train you. You don't need all these different because they don't know box. Because at the end of the day, you didn't want to know. Okay, it's a lot. Like when we look at the Joshua fight with Usyk, look at what happened in the last round. You're sitting on the ropes getting punched up by Usyk, and you're lucky. And to me, I would say 99%. I'll say Usyk was holding back. Yeah. He was holding back because when I spar Kel, bro, listen, Kel, it's the same. I'm not arrogant. I'm not saying I'm in Joshua's league, but I'm entitled to give an opinion. And when I spar Kel Brook, it's the same principle. Kel Brook was clearly holding back. In my opinion, I think Usyk was holding back because if you knock him out, you make less money in the rematch. But I'm saying it's like you're standing on the ropes, just taking punches. You're sticking your tongue out. But it's like you're lucky you didn't get finished off. You're lucky. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, there was times in that fight where Joshua got hurt. We've seen him get knocked out by, we've seen him get dropped by Klitschko. We've seen him get get knocked out by Ruiz. You're lucky you didn't get finished off. And again, all I'm saying, you've got all these people around you, but you ain't got the same fire as Muhammad Ali. So you didn't have that fire to fight back. And I'm going to, yeah. I'm, you, you just you got you went into survival mode, you know. So all I'm trying to get at, having a big team around you is a waste of money and time. They can't make you fight. They they can't. But yeah, they can get you fit or whatever. But at a certain point, there's only so. All I'm trying, all people can do for you, they can add one percent here, two percent here, five. They can add something, but you need to be bringing most of it to the table. You know, like take you, if you trained with, if you trained with um, whoever for the next two years, uh, uh, his trainer, Rob or Robert McCracken. So I think I said Robert Smith. I meant to say Robert McCracken. If Robert McCracken trained you for the next two years or if Dominic Ingle trained you for the next two years, you're going to become much better, obviously, but you're never going to win a world title. You're never, you're never going to become good enough. And this is what people in boxing, a lot of, you need to be the one bringing most of it to the table. You need to bring the talent, bring the, 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 the fire, and people can work with that. But, but anyway, I've gone on long enough. I'm just, don't waste your money on all these useless people. Oh, Aid, aid this train situation, situation. is he wasting his time trying to, you know, you know spar with uh, Lutz Coley and go to Eddie Reynoso and then want, and want his shield and, and moving yes, around, he's, training, training, he's wasting his time. Yeah, he's, of course he's wasting his time. So as I said, I won't, I won't, I'll keep it as short as I can. And so tell me what you think. Don't just let me dominate. When he was on the ropes against who's it's like, yeah, but you, you bowled it. Like I'll say it to your face. I'm not, I'm not disrespecting you, but they can't help you in that regard. They can't help you like. You're running from this guy to that guy to this guy to that guy. But go go look at some of these classic fights. Go look at... Okay, right, forget classic fights. Look at Fury Wilder. Both those guys were getting dropped. Yeah. But when they yeah. got dropped, they will come... They will get up off... They will get off the canvas with fire. They come back to fight. Yes. Pacquiao. You remember when Pacquiao dropped... What was his name? Marquez. Yeah. He dropped him. So I'm saying it's not, it's not. But again, but it's not. Look, it's not. People act as if boxing's a secret, or they say, "What's the secret to success?" There is no secret to success. It's not saying, okay. "Oh, what's the secret?" There's no. Joshua, you you haven't got the file. To me, I think he could have beaten. I think he could have beaten Usyk that night. Yeah, definitely. But you weren't fighting with that file. Like with me, me and Kel Book. I'm not saying I would, I would. I was never gonna beat him. I'm not saying that. But when he dropped me, I could have got up off the canvas. I could. The first one, I, I got up. But when I got up, I thought. I tell you what was going through my head. When I got back up, I thought, All right, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get hurt. I, I don't want to get hurt. That's what was going through my mind. I could have got up and said, "You know what, you killed Brooke. 
I don't even if you hurt, I'm, I'm, I could have come back with with fire. I could have come swinging, and I've, I'd have probably landed some shots. And I guarantee you, I'm not exaggerating, but the people watching would have been like, "Oh, oh, Michael's, hey, Michael's yeah, trying." Back, yeah, back from the dead, you know, back, back and from, a lot back to business. And and it's the same for the people watching. You'd watch that, and you'd say, "Oh, this, hey, this kid's got guts." But I would have probably landed one shot. I would have. But I didn't get up with that intention. I just what was I doing? I was running. If it if it was again, if I spied him again, I'd say screw it. I'm gonna plant my feet, and if I get punched, I get punched. So, he's not gonna knock me out. Like he's not. You know, I'm I'm relatively safe. But I I try and set my feet, and I say I'm gonna try and do something. So all I'm saying, I don't, I don't think Joshua believes in himself. I think Joshua's very anti fragile. I think Joshua doesn't believe he can beat you, sick. Really, he's just doing that. Yeah. Probably, you know, please, Eddie heard him just doing that of pride. I, I just think he's mentally fragile. I just don't think he believes in himself. He, he is, he is, but it's like, but you look, you just didn't show the fire on that night. I'm not saying you can't win, maybe you can win. Don't get me, I don't think you can win. And if you're fighting him in your next fight, very uh, unlikely. I'll, I'll see now. I don't think now. The whole training situation is into as well. He, just, he, looks, he looks lost. Look, Joshua's lost now. Looks lost. AJ's lost. He's lost. Look, you're just, yeah, but all this. Look, I, I don't want to keep talking about the same subject, but it's just so stupid to what all this cringeworthiness running to this guy, running to that guy. But they they won't be able to. They can't do anything for you because you you yourself. And to me, I think you've got the ability. I think he could have beaten Usyk that night, but you ain't willing to come with that fire. You ain't willing. Okay, it's like some people are talkers. You put me in front of an audience, I can talk. But you take... The example I always keep using is Katie Taylor. Like, look at the way she talks on... Can you imagine if I accomplished what Katie Taylor had accomplished? You, you, you imagine the way I talk at press conference. I tell everybody, like, I'm a polite person. I think maybe I, I am a bit arrogant, but I'm a very polite person. But if I was at a top table, like, boy... I'll be I'll, I'll be polite to my opponents, but I'll tell them. I said, like you're not on my list. Like look at what I've achieved. I'm just going to get show. knocked out. You, you, you'll be a showstopper. You're still in show. These we are smooth. You know. I'm saying I'm not. Yeah, I'm not judging. I'll explain where I'm going with this. Katie Taylor's not a talker. You know, like Eddie Hearn's an excellent talker. So what I'm trying to get at, you you're not. You're either a talker or you're not. Someone can't turn you. Could turn you into a tall car. So, and this is what I'm saying about Joshua. Look, he's a good fighter. You respect his accomplishments, but all fighters have got weaknesses. Muhammad Ali, they all had weaknesses. But one of Joshua's weaknesses, you just, when you come under fire, you're not a, it's like Mike Tyson. He never won a fight that he was losing. And yeah. with Joshua, you just mentally, you can't, who's, uh, who's a perfect, who's a good example? It's like, uh, who, who's and you can t- uh, who would you say someone if you knock them down they'll get they'll get back up with fire who who would you say as an example Dr. Zoa okay uh, or to take someone like Artur Gatti or Ward fires and that's just something Joshua needs to I don't know why, why I'll we'll come back with fire White yeah. White has a fire that Joshua lacks has that fire in his belly I, I the tiger that's the yeah and look I'm not judging him and Look, no fight is going to be perfect. And that's something fans in the boxing world is very stupid about. Like, look, I'm not, no fight is going to be perfect. You're always going to have weaknesses. Even you and me doing what we do on YouTube, we're both going to have weaknesses and we're going to have strengths and weaknesses in what we do. You know, of course, I'm not asking for Joshua to be perfect, but I can see that you're weak in that area. You know, and I just stop. Don't blame other people like running to this guy, running to that. I do what you want, but you're to me, it looks very stupid because we're in January, you've got less than how you've got very little time. And instead of just sitting down and training, you're running from this guy to that guy, and then you're getting Floyd Mayweather to watch you hit the heavy back. What's Floyd gonna tell you? Floyd's Floyd's a world away, how can he help you? The world's away, is he gonna tell you to be mentally strong or something? Like it's not you're not, but that's something as a man. Like that's you. Not you shouldn't need other people to tell. You should know this for yourself. Just say that I bottled it, 
uh, yeah, some, some straight talk here. Yeah. Don't use all these big ones. You bottled it. It's like when I spied Kel Book, I'm not going to tell anybody. I wasn't injured. I wasn't. And the shots he hit me with, they weren't the hardest shots. I, I bottled it because I said, I felt the shots and I thought he might hit me harder. You know what I mean? But that's what I was scared. But he didn't hurt me that bad. I'm not saying that. I'm, believe me when I'm saying, I could have. I could have fought him aggressively. I yeah. chose not to because I like, was like in my heart. I believe you know. I believe Sean Sean has quit against um, Canelo. I don't think he wanted to continue. I think he I think he bottled it. I, I was telling him to his face on that. I think Sean quit against Canelo. Do you think when I mean, he fought Canelo, when he stopped? I, I it's despite what you know what um Mark Tibbs or uh, what's his name, but I don't say he stopped the fight. I think he didn't want he didn't want to continue. Sean, I honestly think he didn't want to continue. He didn't. Well, it's just... Look, anybody... It's easy when you're the one landing shots, but mm. obviously when you're getting hit back, well, he didn't want to continue. I'm not judging him. And, you know, he got hit with that shot against... He got hit with that shot against Canelo. And he just... Yeah, he didn't want to know. So yeah, boxers are human beings as well. Boxers are... People say boxing are warriors. They're glad they, they are, but the human beings as well, they have their limits. We human beings have the limits. Some, some people will fight to death, some boxers won't fight to death. And, you know, you know, Paul Age is probably one of those fighters that, you know, doesn't want to fight to the death. And, and same with, you know, no, he's, he's not, he's not. Yeah, sorry to jump in. Yeah, he's not someone that will fight to the death. I, just I, got I said, Anyway, I'm speaking about Mayweather. Um, what's your opinion? I talked about this. Apparently, Jake Paul, uh, not Jake Paul, Logan Paul has been paid by the Mayweather fight. Mayweather hasn't paid him yet. Pirate Mayweather owes um, Logan Paul is it five million dollars um, for the you know last last year's in exhibition fight. What do you think the whole Mayweather situation? Not paying cheap, uh, Logan Paul and Logan Paul, you know, you know, possibly suing him and because that fight was uh, back in June last year, so it's been over six months and apparently Logan Logan Paul hasn't been, had been paid a penny. So what do you think of all Mayweather? Mayweather is, is he going bow? Is his promotion not making any money? What's going on? Also, yeah, Paddy Mayweather has to be paid by Al Hamer. Um, Al Hamer owes Mayweather millions. Does well. he? And I've, also, I've seen... as well, um, with Mayweather, so I sort of uh, put in, apparently, May, the reason why Mayweather was at, at Canelo um, for beating um, Killer Plant is because that 50 million that Al, Al Hamer paid Canelo for fighting on BBC, uh, Mayweather hasn't got any money out of that. And probably Mayweather's a shareholder of BBC or something like that. So Mayweather's, Mayweather is mad at Canelo as well as Al Hamer for not getting paid these royalties and that I'll keep it very short I I've seen the comments by Logan Paul all I can say if you haven't been paid then obviously take legal action yeah you know but it, the, the thing about boxing I don't know it's all smoke and mirrors a lot of the time I remember I saw a documentary by um they had a gangster rap documentary and you had people like 50 cent and so on they were talking about rappers and they said a lot of rappers are not as rich as you think they are because a lot of stuff you see is high is rented or whatever so i say about mayweather i don't know i mean i'm I'm just talking from common sense i haven't got any inside knowledge he might have made a lot of money but then it's not as much money as people think because then a lot of you've got people on the payroll the trainer takes yeah i mean but you've got all these people around mayweather yeah, but these are adults, and adults have got living costs. They've got got to fill up their cars with petrol. They've got kids, and they've got so these guys are all getting paid. These guys are all draining away. You got Mayweather. You always see him with those big four or five bodyguards. You know these guys are going to be getting paid. Then you're flying them around to other countries. So got they get paid. as well. Yeah. Then you got Mayweather all this gambling rubbish. To be honest, I think Mayo was. I I personally don't think he's as rich as people think he. I I think, um, yeah, I think money wise, he's not doing too good. Oh yeah, you know, I, so. I also Mayo was fighting in yeah. Dubai ex- exhibition. I think twelfth of February in Dubai. So Mayo was again. He's fighting again exhibition. I saw that for some type of promotional deal with some, you know, um Saudi princess. So I wonder what Mayo was doing with you know fast promotion that goes because I don't think. What what is he doing with promotion? You know, TNT promotion not doing anything. Is is the last place um price fighter with Tang? He didn't make he didn't make he didn't do uh, enough buys with that uh, Isaac Cruz fight. How that fight flopped? Only did hundred um you know thousand pay per view fight. So 
So maybe he's not making much money off his promotional deal. So what's he actually making money off? Is it strip club? Is it um, TMT you know, clothing line? Where's his maybe making his real estate? So he, he, maybe he's got a point there. Maybe he's not making as much money as he thinks. He's best, definitely not off TMT. Because that promotion is going nowhere. But yeah, it's just common sense. Do you remember when he bought a car for $5 million? Yeah, I think it was a Bugatti, yeah. So then you, you're doing stuff like that. Then you've got all the watches. To me, he doesn't come across as the most intelligent person. And when you've got all these watches that are, I, I can't remember, you know, I, I don't know, but you've got all these watches that are like 10 grand or 50 grand each, the money's going to drain away quick. So, yeah, to me, I, I don't think he's doing well financially. I, I, I heard about the exhibition he's fighting again. But even these exhibitions, I mean, take Logan Paul. Like I said, I've got no inside knowledge, but... I mean, how do we know it was a successful fight? I mean, I don't know what the pay per view was, but again, I, but I don't really trust. Um, I, they they might say it's a million buys, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure that I believe it. People in boxing lie. There's no way of checking. I mean, who knows? Maybe it did very badly on the pay per view. I think Tank Davis did badly on pay per view, and yeah. and yeah, it's just something people don't get. Where yeah, don't want to go on about it at length, but. Boxing's more complicated than people think it is. And if, if Al Heyman hasn't paid him, but then that's another problem because now you're going to have to take Al Heyman to court and how much money is that going to cost? How long is it going to cost? How long is it going to take you? And to me, Al Heyman's much more intelligent than Mayweather. Are. So if that is the case where Al Heyman hasn't, hasn't paid you, to me, that's just that's a mismatch. In terms of intelligence, so Al Heyman's going to mess, like, I don't know. You're the first one to tell me that. But if if you're going to try, if, if Mayweather's going to try and take on Al Heyman in terms of brains, I feel sorry for him because he might be a clever boxer, but as a person, he's not intelligent. I mean, if it's true that he can't even read, you've got no college qualifications, and you're going to take on someone who's been to Harvard. So Heyman's going to drag it out and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. Um, so if that's true, you know, you're going to be suffering there. I guess, I guess it's true. Maybe 50% was right when they fell out. Maybe 50 is right. Maybe, I know, maybe it's not as clever as he, I was just thinking, especially with money. Maybe, maybe he likes to make money, he builds the money. He makes the money, he builds the money. He makes the money, he builds the money. No, no long-term investments. So he just, you know, very fast, you know, like that's lived a high life, but very fast paced. Doesn't know how to manage his money. He always comes out with time to do these exhibition fights, you know, McGregor and the Japanese guy and Logan Paul and so on and so on. All I'll say quickly about 50, but look, we live in a very celebrity obsessed society where people think they go crazy for celebrities. But people don't understand celebrity, a lot of celebrities are dumb. Like, you know, they do silly things. Okay, even I don't mean to get personal, but if you look at Melville's situation with his ex wife or whatever, in my opinion, I think he did use some sort of violence because if your own kids are testifying against you, I think he did use some sort of violence. I mean this with all due respect. And, and also, I know it's none of my business, but as an example, but for someone in that position to use violence against a woman, I mean, look, you're a boxer. You know, like, just, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know if you, even if she tried to punch you, like, you're Floyd Mayweather, use the shoulder roll, you know. Uh, so you're wait here, look, you're a bit... Um, so I thought the connection went um so I'm saying it, it wasn't a wise decision and then you ended up going to prison for that if I was in Floyd's position I wouldn't really hit a woman because I, I just I've got too much to lose the only way I'd do it unless you came at me with a knife or something because in that case I could justify it in court but other than but if I had if I was in this position you wouldn't get me on my own I'll just make sure that I've got I've got police bodyguards so if a woman tried coming at me I'll just, I just, I say, I'll get my police bodyguards to sort her out. Sometimes he doesn't make the best decisions, you know. Um, don't mean you're an intelligent just because you, just because you're very, very good at a sport, it doesn't mean you, you necessarily understand business. So, yeah, I just think he's, he's not as rich as people think he is. And I remember when you remember when someone stole something from him. I'm trying to remember. I, he left something in his house. I thought, what, was it jewelry or was it a, a large amount of cash? Um, 
and, and this is the last thing I'll say about Mayor Wilford, huh? but I never liked when he was, all that stuff he was doing, taking around bags of cash, that's, just, that's stupid. That's just dumb. Yeah, him and Adrian Bowner, yeah. Now, why are you carrying around bags of cash? Well, what happens if one of your team just, when you know, when you're not looking, they manage to oh. just slip their hand and take a grand? Oh, yeah. How no, are you no, gonna know? Oh, don't get me started about flashing. Remember when Adrian Bowner, when he threw down, it was $100 through the toilet. Oh my God, Jesus! Oh, I don't oh. really, I don't really want to talk. That's disgusting. But, but look at you now. You're struggling. You like, know, I'm, I'm. Listen, I hope he goes broke. I'd say, I'll say it to your face because mm. you make these silly choices, and now you're struggling. Now, now you got this monster called Conor Ben. Listen, I'll get in the ring with Conor Ben. That's not an issue because he's going to go easy on me. But you, if you get in the ring with Conor Ben, you know he's not going to go easy on you. You know. I mean, how much money is going to be in the fight, really? Once you and I forgot to mention this. The other thing I, I forgot was taxes. So with Adrian Bona, if you fight Conor Ben, you got the trainer, the manager, Al Heyman. These guys are going to take their money, but then you got the taxes. Uh, you know, the Adrian Bowen, Adrian Bowen, will never be financial. Let's uh, let's see what he's lot of it. Adrian Bowen's washed it first of all, and Adrian no, Bowen's like six, seven kids. He's got a lot no, of kids he, he, May, Bono will never be rich again. And he, he's, he's done. He's, he will never. Bono will always. I think until he, until he, until he's washed up, until he, he can, um, can no longer physically um, box anymore, he's always going to be you know out of um, boxing because he's you know he got seven kids or eight eight baby mamas. I don't know. He's Bono's you know, but Bono's not a you know wasted opportunity. You, you know, wasted his prime year trying to be next Mayweather, lose money, and the rest is history. Well, yeah, you said it all. I've, I was just about to mention the kids, but then you've got all those kids. Where are you going to get the money? Because I don't, I don't think you can beat Conor Ben, you know. But um, a lot of boxers make dumb choices. So do what you want, you know. But long term, I mean, <clears throat> his boxing career, Con, um, Broner's boxing career, like you're running out of time, <clears throat> you know. You're running out of time and. Well, you know, we'll see what happens. But you know, he's. But you know, I've, you know, I've said enough about it. Well, anyways, not enough of Bone, enough of him. Uh, anyways, what do you think of? Um, were you mm -hmm. surprised about um, Josh Warrington fighting Kiko Martinez now for his um, IBF title in March twenty sixth to be confirmed now? So it looks like Kid Galahad trying to get his rematch now, and um, Josh Warrington is taking Martinez instead. What do you think of that? No, of course, I'm not surprised. To be honest, I guessed it. I, I was, I, I didn't do a video. You don't think my so... I thought, I thought mm -hmm. even though the issue was making way, I thought just out of pride that you know to just to end his last that um, um Galahad will take the rematch. You know, exercise the rematch clause and take you know Martinez in the rematch. Mm -hmm. But I guess not. I guess you know Warrington is stepping instead instead and fight Martinez for his IBF title, the, the title that he vacated because he didn't want to fight um you know Galahad for the for the rematch. So interesting, you know, you know. Turning events. I mean, it could be anything. So I, I didn't know that. So are you saying that Galahad turned down the rematch? Yeah, and Josh Warrington is fighting now Martinez for his IBS title on March 26 in Leeds. I can only guess if Galahad's turned it down, I don't think he's scared of him because this is what a lot of fans will say. Because like, he was winning the fight easy. Yeah. It's just that he got caught. I don't think he's scared of him. I just assume it's it's just most likely it's it's got to be weight weight issue because a lot of boxers drain themselves. A lot of boxers are coming down in weight, so that's the only logical explanation. But I I could have predicted I could have predicted Warrington's going to fight him because I think Warrington's a big ticket seller. It's about making money, and they need they need. I don't think Warrington can beat that Lara. You know, and they need some sort of way to make Warrington relevant again because he is business. He does big numbers in Leeds, so I'm gonna do my absolute best. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I guarantee I'm gonna go to that fight. I'll be there. I'm gonna be at Warrington uh, Martinez. I haven't been to a matchroom fight in years. You know, I could I could have gone to the Derek Chisora Parker rematch. But I just thought, for money wise, for, for, I tell you I what, my go to well, let's go, let, let us go together, Warrington and um, Martinez and Mark. Let's arrange a trip together. Let's let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Yeah, yeah. But make the make the partnership, make the dream team. 
Absolutely, let's do it, man. There's, you know, I'll definitely let's do it, man. Let's do it. Either that, or at least, or go to the calm book fight, or both. Let's do it. I'm, I'm calm book. I don't see calm book. I don't see us getting us. I, I haven't got eight hundred pounds for a ticket. Okay, but I'm I sure pay a hundred. Yeah, but the Warrington and and um, Matisse fight would be a lot cheaper. We would be a lot, lot cheaper. Um, they're not as, as high profile as Karen Brook, so those, those that fight would be much cheaper. Yeah, let's go, man. We'll make a joint. We'll make a journey out of it, and um, I, I, I should, yeah, I, I should be able to get into the press conference. And apparently, that. according to Adi, um, Adi Alado Pedo, apparently the warranty fight is very good. Atmosphere is meant to be a main electric warranty in fact. These fans are the hardcore, so it should be a good night out. You know, see warranty. These fans are meant to be, you know, you know, some of the, you know, the most hardcore fans out there. Well, yeah, that's just what a lot of boxers don't get. You know, you need to have a following. It's, it's just as business. It's about how many tickets you can do. You know, and when you've got a following, and obviously it creates atmosphere. Absolutely. Anyway, so, um, apparently, um, Eubank is fighting Williams now. Originally meant to be January the 29th, um, but it's been, you know, obviously delayed because of COVID situation and boxing being banned in Britain. Apparently, it's been rescheduled to February the 5th. So hopefully that will go to corner plan, but we shall see. We shall see if that fight still takes place on February the 5th. Also, um, what do you think of um, Josh Wright fighting um, Danny Jacobs on February the 12th in London? It's a good fight. I think Daniel Jacobs is going to win. But, I mean, look, you've got to try. Obviously, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, so, you know, like it doesn't. my opinion is just another opinion. I'm not saying he can't win. But John Ryder, it's up to him to... This is your opportunity. And obviously, I'm not saying you can't win. I mean, do what you need to do in training. Do, you think Dodge Hick is possibly possibly past it as well? Because he looked terrible against Gabe Rosado. Yeah, I think to be honest, with you, he probably lost that fight, in my opinion. He's a close fight, but I don't think yeah, he... I, I thought so, yeah. I thought, but again, it's not the thing about boxing though. I won't say he's necessarily past it, but it's like I, I mean, you have good performances and bad performances. Okay. I remember Arsenal, I remember when they they went 49 games unbeaten. You remember that? Yes. And what's like, if you look at Manchester re- United recently, people people say Cristiano Ronaldo is the best player in the world, or it's between him and Messi. But then his performances at Manchester haven't been the best. It doesn't mean he's not still a world-class player, but just sometimes it's just the way things work out. So Danny Jacobs lost to Rosado. I mean... It's not the end of the world. I mean, does maybe Rosado is better than people realize? You know, maybe he came with a good game plan. He was strong. He was fit. You know, uh, I, I, there's one thing funny that there's this guy that we both know. I'm going to quote him on this. I think you know who I'm talking about. Maybe Rosado was eating kangaroo meat faster than a speeding bullet. You know. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, Possibly, yeah. But Porky's, Porky's Corner says that a lot, doesn't he? Absolutely. So, I mean, look, you, you might get two guys that are... Danny Jacobs is on a different level to Rosado, but if Rosado, say Rosado came for that fight fit, strong, been doing 50 chin-ups a day, been, I don't know, been sparring 20 rounds a day, then obviously you're going to put up a great performance. So, I, I just think, I think Danny Jacobs is still a good fighter, and... It's just up to it's, it's up to John Ryder now. Here's your opportunity. Take it. Anyway, we shall see. We shall see. Um, we shall hopefully Ryder. I want Ryder to win because I think Ryder deserves. You know, he's a big up fight because to be honest, he did beat Caleb Smith and he got robbed. You know, so I think you know definitely you know you know John Ryder deserves you know, a big up fight to put him on the back of the map because you know he got robbed against the tower against you know Smith and. You know. Hopefully, Ryder does you know does, does something special, but we shall see. We shall see. Um, also, um, um, Jamel Charles is fighting Brian, Brian Castano for undisputed like you know, champ, like middle championship back on March the nineteenth. Um, are you are you fan of Charles? What's your opinion about Charles Brothers? Do you think they're good fighters? Do you think they're overrated, or are you into the Charles Brothers? Yeah, I think they're good fighters. I mean, they're both. I mean, yeah, he's, he's very strong. He can punch. He's a tough fighter. Mm. Who they're beating though? The Chalabos are meant to be really good, but who they're beating them notice? Who they're actually beating that, you know, wow, this is, you know, 
you know, these these are, you know, elite fighters. I don't think they're world-class fighters, but I didn't really leave. Who they've actually beaten? Either, but... but I would I would say, though, but the problem with boxing, it's not... When people say that... But the thing is, box it's very complicated to get fights to happen. Yeah, because of so the politics you, and this one, so that, you look that, at, each other, yeah. If you look at Fury versus White, as an example, it's difficult to get fights to happen. So when people say who will fight is beaten, that's elite, it's not really the fighters that are to blame. Because when you're growing up, it's like you, you're trying to do your thing on YouTube and so am I. So you, your your goal is, you know, I want to interview the biggest names. I want to, but it depends if you can get access to them or not. And if you can't, it's not on you. It's because it's hard to get access to them. So I say, so the thing about Charles, listen to me, they'll fight guys, but it's whether it's whether the teams and so yeah, on. That, that, to me, that, that potential, but unproven to me in terms of in terms of you know, you know resume. I think they're good fighters, and yeah, I I'm not I agree. They're good fighters. I'm not saying they're elite. I, I don't think they're on like Canelo, Canelo or Fury's level, or even or Josh Taylor's level. I think they're good fighters, but to me, it's still unproven. The world class, but not elite, in my opinion, because they haven't proven themselves to be elite. They haven't fought anybody. They haven't fought Canelo. They haven't fought Andrade. They haven't fought Golovkin. They haven't fought any of these names. I, I think they would fight them, but in my opinion, I just think it's just to do with whether they're going to get the opportunity to. It's more business. It's not really because you don't you don't see. I think they're with Al Heyman, aren't they? But you don't really see Al Heyman pushing for. I want to get you in with Golovkin. I want to get you in with, with. I want to get you in with Andre. Then I mean, Al Heyman don't even want to talk to Eddie Hearn. Like, what kind of nonsense is that? Because to me, obviously, in terms of what I'm trying to do in boxing, I've got no problem talking and working with people like. I was I was in touch with uh, you know Steve Goodwin the other day. Yes. So I've been talking to Steve Goodwin. He said January is busy, but he's gonna next month. He's him and me are gonna do an interview together, and it's gonna be very interesting to watch because I'm gonna tell him I've got plans in boxing. I want to work in, in boxing. I want to work with some of your fighters, and I'm gonna say to him, "What's your advice? Like, what what do I have to do?" You know, I want I want to get a British Boxing Board of Control license. I want to go to college. I want to go to university, and I want to hear what he's got to say. For me, I'll talk to any of these people. Like, uh, yeah, he'll be, he'll, be, he'll be a good guy to into because he's meant to be. He's meant, he's meant to be from what I've heard and researched. He's, he's actually he's a, not a financial advisor. Some type of financial. Yes, guy. yes, yes. He's meant to be a very intelligent guy. Could win. See, we could win. Very. No, he is. He is. I mean, look, what I'm saying, I've got no problem working with Goodwin. I've got no problem working with Heyman. I've got no problem working with Bob Arum. But going back to what you're talking about, but Al Heyman doesn't even want to talk to Eddie Hearn. So it's not really the Charlo's fault because if he won't even talk to another promoter... Yeah, I, I then, agree, definitely. I mean, what kind of nonsense is that? Like, that's ridiculous. What kind of nonsense is that? And the problem is, I'll, I'll say it quickly... The problem with boxing, these prom- they've got too much power. Like you shouldn't be able to, because in football, in football, the 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 team the team managers, they can't stop matches from happening. It's yeah, like the match gets on the one the bang, ma- on the, the premiership. Yeah. The, the back is yeah, in one league. Everybody has to follow the same rules. Whereas boxing is is you know, there's like ten different promoters. And then the thing is, as you've seen with this Leonard Ellaby and her, the problem is. If you don't like Eddie Hearn, that's up to you. That's your opinion. Same with me. I, if you don't like, if someone said they don't like me, I don't really care. You know, like if Leonard Ellaby said he's going to punch me when he sees me, <laughs> all right, I'll come up to uh, punch me then. I think you're uh, too quick, Freddie. Six... I think you're too quick and slick. You probably just do the Mayweather shoulder roll and just, you know, bounce Exactly. But like, I'll, I'll be nice. Like, I don't really want to go around punching 60 year old men. So I, I, if he, if he was saying, I just got, got up to you, I said, well, what's the problem? Isn't it? Like, why do you want to hit me? But um, the problem is, what happens with these people? They they stop fights from happening. That's the problem. Like if you don't like someone, that's up to you. But then the problem where they stop fights from happening. So going back to what you said, I give the Charlos the benefit of the doubt because what? But why would they not fight these? Like you, you, if you got the chance to interview Joshua, you would. So to them, if you like, do you do you train? Do you do anything? Any Lifting weights or anything? Yeah, yeah, I go to the gym. Yeah, I'm, I'm a gym right. I go, I lift weights. Yeah. Well, again, but it's like 
I'm not saying you have to be a fighter, but when you're lifting weights, don't you try to lift as much as possible? Yeah, yeah, I try and move my strength as well as my, you know, muscle gains. So what I'm saying, and remember, like, you're not, I'm not looking down on you, but you, so have you, have you ever boxed? I sparred. I think I, I told you this. I sparred. I sparred, you know, a few amateurs. No, never boxed professionally or, no, did, you know, um, amateur boxing. I've done sparring. Okay. So I, I'll explain where I'm going with this. I'm not looking down on you and I'm definitely not saying, I'm not saying you need to be a fighter to understand what I'm saying. But when, when you see people like you or these fans or who, who don't box, you, you're not really, you can't see it from a boxer's point of view. And what I mean is, I'm not going to say anything patronising, but the, the, the Charlers have boxed how many times amateur? Yeah, you know, you've boxed amateur, you keep going up the levels. You've had pro fights, da 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 da, da. So when you say, yeah, would you fight Golovkin? At the end of the day, Golovkin's just another man. Like, they're not, they're, why would they be scared? Like, take me. So, I, you know, I'm not, it's the same narrative. Like, I've been in the ring with Kel Brook, I've been in the ring with Tyson Fury, Kelly Pavlik, Brandon Rios. Like, would I spar Golovkin if that opportunity came up? Yes, I would. Would I spar the Charlos? I'd spar them, but I'd say those guys come across as more, especially, I don't know which one he is. He's more, he's more intimidating than, say, in my opinion, if I spar Golovkin, I think Golovkin's a nice guy and he's not going to take the mick. With the Charlos, I'd spar them but you can best believe I'll make sure that the trainer's in the gym and I'll say to him, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll genuinely say to him, oh, look, yeah. Yeah. look I, I trust you, yeah, but can I trust the Charlos not to knock me out? But, and who, but who knows? I, was, I don't know. I'm sure they're nice enough. Like if I just say to them politely, like, if I say to Charlo, like, I'll spy you, but just try not to kill me. Like, let's just do a bit of film for the, but I'd, I'd get in there. That's what I'm trying to say. So, so that's what I'm saying. They're getting there, but it's not it, It's not a boxer's fault if fights aren't happening. That's not their... You know what I mean? They're not the ones setting fights up. They're not the ones with the financial power, the network. Like, Al Heyman is... But unfortunately, Al Heyman, ain't, he's not going to... He doesn't like doing interviews, you know? Yeah, yeah, I thought... I, get, I, get, I, know, I know it's not all the boxers' fault. I just wish boxers would, would stand up for themselves and just fight, you know, the, the best fights in the, you know, in the division. And oh. so, Nah, but you you can't you can't it's not I'm not I'm not I'm not I'll keep it short I don't think I'm defending them too much I'm not saying there's not more you can do but it's not like the way it is basically ultimately the promoter has to decide is they've got the power to decide if I'm putting you in the ring with him it's as simple as that so they're they're lit they're just people and the thing is they'll probably but they'll mess you around. They'll say something like, oh, Golovkin's asking for too much money or whatever it is, you know. But like, just look at the fact. Okay, I'll keep it short. Leonard Ellaby said that I'm going to punch Eddie Hall when I see him. All right. If you look at the way people have reacted to that comment, I'm, I'm probably the only person, if I saw Leonard Ellaby, I'd sit him down and I'd try and talk some sense into him. But other people aren't doing it. They're saying, it's, oh, yeah, Lena did it, like, seconds out or whatever. I'm like, yeah, you know, are you going to fight Eddie Hart? Like, I just make it silly. And you don't, you don't hear a lot of, you don't hear fighters, as far as I'm aware, but you don't hear them challenge Lena Dele. Because if you're, you're making silly comments, like someone like Tank Davis, you should, you should tell, you should put Lena Dele in his place. But you're not a fighter. I tell you, like, Lena, you're not a fighter. And the problem is he's messing things up for you because... Eddie Hearn's got Devin Haney. He's got, I, I don't know if he's, he's worked as he, no, no, no. Um, he had Lopez and I don't know if he's got, what I'm trying to say, I don't know if he's got Cambosis now. He, had, he also had Kevin and, Farmer for a bit, but I think he left now for, to work with MGK. He had Kevin Farmer. Because Kevin Farmer was always trying to get a fight with Tank Davis back in the day as well. But this is what I'm trying to say. It's not really the boxers that can set fights up and then, the people that can set fights up, they've all got these all little little agendas and so on. And I mean, I've already said it, but for him to say I'm not gonna I'm gonna punch Eddie Hearn when I see it, yeah, but Eddie Hearn ain't gonna stand there and let you do it, is he? And like I said, it's not it's not as if it's gonna be easy. Eddie Hearn's much younger and he's much bigger. 
So I right, go, go up to him and punch him. You know what? One, one, one fight I, w- I want to happen. It should have happened, but I want it to happen because I'm I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a loon when it comes to you know boxing. Uh, Mickey Fear versus <laughs> that um, you know Big John Fury. John Fury. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I want that fight to happen. I, it won't happen, but I want it to happen. I just, I just know. I think it's be fireworks. The press conference probably be the, the best thing of the fight. The whole build up, the press conference. Imagine those two: John Fury, Mickey Fury, Porky's Corner, Tyson Fury, Shane Fury. Oh my God, it would be mayhem. That would be a press conference to to entertain. That'd be a, a press conference of a lifetime. Oh, oh my God, you need security. You need public. You need you need to you know SES. You know bodyguards in that conference because it's gonna be electric. <laughs> I want you to add. Um, you can add Dean White and myself. Dean White can promote it, and I I could spar everybody. Yeah, that would be funny. Oh but it's not, yeah, it's not going to happen though. Um, that that'd, that'd be a promoter stream. Oh my god, uh, I don't think I, honestly that press conference is going to be chairs falling everywhere. Fist, John Fury going going mad at Mickey Fury. You know what is going in? Oh my god, uh, that, 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 yeah. that'd be that'd be a that'd be a fight to see oh anyways you know unfortunately it won't happen it won't happen anyways anything else you want to you know talk about regards to the boxing you know any other news we, we need to you know, discuss um let me try and see i think we've covered the main sort of topics i think what i'll finish off on unless you've got something else to bring up it's sort of a little bit different from boxing have you seen have you seen the comments by molly may about what? Molly May is Tommy Fury's. I know she is. You know, I love, I love Island Girl. Oh, I, know you know. She is. I know she is. Uh, you so basically, I'll, I'll send you the video clip. But basically, she was talking about. She's just sort of talking about six. I don't know. I haven't seen all of it. I've seen the main comment she made. I don't know the context, but just basically, she's basically saying stuff like she's talking about success, and she's like, "Oh yeah, you know." But why are people, something along the lines of, yeah, but, you know, we've all got the same 24 hours in a day and some people are just being lazy and why, why don't they just get up and get a job? Something along those lines. And it's got a lot of backlash where a lot of people have um, um, obviously responded to it. Because when you're saying this stuff about everyone's got the same 24 hours in a day, um, obviously a lot of people started talking about uh, the differences in society and... Yeah, but we're not, we, we haven't all got the same opportunities. And for me, I, I, I was going to do a video on it today. I didn't have enough time, but I'm going to do a video this weekend. And I'm not, some people were talking about, they were bringing up, like her name was trending. Some people were bringing up skin color and they said, well, it's easier for a white woman to achieve success. When I do my video, I'm not going to bring skin color into it, but I'd say, but, I'd say the comments are stupid because if you, I'll keep it short as I can because it's like, yeah, but we haven't all got the same opportunities in life. To me, I think I'm a much more intelligent and interesting person than Tommy Fury. Or I, I say, forget me. I, I, I don't, I don't want to use myself as an example. It looks arrogant, even though I am a little bit arrogant. But take Tommy Fury. But he's only where he is. He's done nothing as amateur. He's done nothing as a pro. He's only where he is because of his, who his brother is. You know, as an it's like, but we haven't all got the same opportunity in life. If your dad's, if your dad's name is David Beckham, what, I, I, do I have the same opportunity as you? If your, if your mum's name is Princess Diana or Queen Elizabeth, do I have the same opportunity as Prince William? Prince, so when she's like this, oh, everyone's got the same twenty four hours. In a, oh, then when she says something like, um. Yeah, she said the thing about people don't work hard enough. Like, you're talking rubbish. Like, people people do work hard, but if you work at Tesco, yeah, you're working hard, but there's going to be a window. There's going to be a, a level. You're not going to get past. So what, what, what can the average person do? Not, every, not everyone can play basketball. Not everyone can play tennis. Like, and her, you're famous because you you've, you've gone on this little celebrity love island program. And obviously, a lot of your success is based on your looks. So, like, don't give me this. But like, so a lot of people. But yeah, anyway, I agree. I've said I agree. No, fortunately, this world is in you know, it's unfair world. Not everybody's born equal. Therefore, because of because of our circumstances, you're not all all have the same opportunities in life. And I'll say very quickly. I think for me, the reason I've taken interest in it, 
and I'm not jumping on the bandwagon. I'm not like that. I, I'm an independent thinker. But the reason I, I don't like it is because besides this patronizing attitude where people like her are in positions of power and success, like they look down on people. And it's like, it's very arrogant. Because like, look, you're lucky. You've gone on Celebrity Love Island and you've achieved six, but don't look down on people and say they don't work hard. Yeah? Have you done the work that I've done? Go, go work on a construction site in winter and tell me people don't like, we don't work hard enough. Or the, the, the job that I did recently, so I was doing night shift, I was working for the NHS. Listen, I'm, I am I worked for the NHS here. Yeah. So not for the NHS, I was working at a sort of warehouse where we clean NHS like medical clothing, bed sheets and stuff. All I'm gonna say is this year, some of the stuff that they were sending to us, that they, you know, hospital bed sheets and so on, we have to wear gloves, we have to wear masks, we have to wear like a little, like, you know, like when you see the dinner ladies, you, you wear like those little blue hats. I'm not going to tell you some of the stuff that you, some on those bed sheets, I'm not even going to tell you what was on some of these bed sheets that oh, they're sending I don't, us. I don't, I don't, I don't, let me just leave it at that. So I'm like, I'm doing eight hours, night shift, yeah. Don't give me this rubbish about people don't work hard. And it's like, okay, this is the last thing I'll say. For me, I understand. I'm not going to look down on anyone. With me, I'm a very talkative person. I can talk a lot. I'm very confident. I walk up to, like, if I talk to women, I'll treat you the same way I treat men. I'm very confident with the way I talk to people. And the thing about me sparring people that Kill Book video, I uploaded it in October. That video has already got not over nine, it's got 9,500 views. So I, where, where I'm going with this, if I keep sparring people, if you take people like yourself, like I, I don't look down on anyone, but it's going to be very difficult for you to get the same opportunities as me because I'll spar people, you won't. Like I'll, I don't mind, I'll spar Dean White tomorrow if he wants. And you know that's going to get a heck of a lot of views. Whereas with you, you wouldn't really spar him because you'd probably think, you know, that you might get hurt. He's a big guy. He's not a joke. But I'd spar, I'd spar Dean White tomorrow or Mickey Theo. Like, yeah. I'm not going to call these people out, but same with Mickey Theo. I'd, I'd spar him. I'd jump in there, like, see what happens. But all I'm trying to say, I'm not going to look down on other people. That's like me saying to you, oh, why just go up and do things in boxing. Yeah, but it's not as simple as that. Boxing's about numbers. And if I spar Mickey feel, it's going to be very difficult for you to match that. Because if you're just talking, yeah, but everyone does videos talking. Like if I spar Mickey feel, you know a lot of people are going to, are going to watch that. They're going to flip it now. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're going to watch what happens. They're going to be like, oh, imagine if Mickey feel knocks him out. So, so this is all I'm saying. I just don't like this thing in society. Like, don't look down on people. Yeah? Like, don't take the mick. Don't tell me that Molly May's more intelligent than me or, or she works harder than me. No, you don't. I work in construction. I've done ages. Like, you, know, you don't work hard. Well done that you've got to where you've got to. I'll give you credit. But don't take the mick and say, oh, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because that's the last thing I'll say. Yeah, but you've basically gone on Love Island. And like, you're a woman. So obviously you've got this you know people find you attractive i don't i think you're a clown but you've got these opportunities based on the way you look so obviously you're going to get that attention from men i'm a man so obviously i'm not going to have that same effect on men so i don't take the mick and say oh yeah you know i, I work hard for a living well, you work hard for a living you've got no college you know you what have you done that's so hard what about people that are going to college and uni and doing i know this for a fact and then they're doing they're working at the same time doing job like night shift so like don't don't take the mick you know it's yeah just... absolutely yeah i thought i so okay in that case in this world do you think everybody can be successful if they wanted to or just unfortunately you think like it's just you know unfortunately certain people can be successful some people can't just based on uh circumstances and not and you know that you know upbringing and so and so no, I, I say no. I think that's rubbish. Not not everyone's going to be successful because, but there's limits. There's limits to it. You know, I I think a lot of people. I'll keep it short. But it's like me, yeah. In terms of what I'm doing, I'd say, 
all these people that are setting up their YouTube channels like you and whoever are, people are people. I'll give anybody a time of day. But actually, let me ask you the question. All right, let me just repeat what I've just said. Okay, I'll, I'll say your channel, you're not, you're, you can't become as successful as me. I'm not, let me, in my opinion, let me explain myself. I'm not being arrogant. It's not impossible. I'm not saying you can't become the next Al Heyman or that's up to you. Go to college, go to university. You could find a way. In terms of, if you're just going to stick to doing videos, you're not going to be more successful. Than, there's no way. Because I'll spar people. You won't. I don't, if I see Mickey Fio, I'd go up to, I'd have no problem saying to him politely, I'd show him the Kell book video and I'd say to him, hey, listen, Mickey, if you ever got time, is it possible for me to come to your gym and spar you? And I'd, I'd say to him straight, I'd listen to what he has to say. And if he says something like, oh, you look a bit small, I don't want you to get hurt. I'd say to him, I'd say, look, if you hurt me, I'm willing to sign a contract that I'm not allowed to sue you. So I'd, I'll do everything I can to try and push him to spar me. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say, if he, if he, it's only a matter of time before I spar someone. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not, it's not, I'm, I don't think I'm being egotistical talking about myself, but I'm saying if, if you've got people that are just coming from the angle of, I want to interview people in boxing, you're not going to achieve the same success as me because I'll spar people. And sparring, I think you'll agree, it's going to get a lot more attention than, than interviews, you know. So, so yeah, I, I don't think, no, there's limits in life. And you, you're going to achieve success based on, there's a limit depending on how confident you are, depending on what background you're coming from. And I, you know, I don't mean to talk about myself, or I'll give you a better example. But if you're, like I said, a better example, if, you're, if your mum's name is Princess Diana, if your grandma's name is Queen Elizabeth, 99% of people, you're never, ever going to come close to achieving that sort of success. But, you know, if you look at Prince Harry and Prince uh, William, if I met them, I'll, I'll treat them the same way I treat you. I don't, people are people. If I met Harry, I just say, how you doing, Harry? Nice to meet you. I wouldn't ask him to spot her, but I'd, you know, I'd try and see if I could get an interview, try and get him on my channel. But most people, if you look at the effect that celebrities have, for me, if I met Prince Harry, I, I'm not calling, I'm, I wouldn't call him Prince, I'd call him Harry. I'll treat him the same way I treat other people, but most people will get very excited if he walks into a room. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So when you talk about the average person who you're not a member of royalty, you might be more intelligent than Prince Harry. You might be more hardworking. You might be a nicer person, but you're not going to achieve the same kind of success because you're not going to have that effect on people. And that's not fair, but that's the world we live in. So yeah, I hope the answer wasn't too long, but I just think when they say anybody can achieve anything, that's rubbish. That's, that's not true. I think that's rubbish because it's like Hollywood. Not Because every, not everyone's got what it takes because you're not, you're not going to, People are not going to give you the opportunities. They're going to reject you. Or even like boxing. Why does Jake Paul and them guys, why do they get the opportunities other people don't? Because they've got a fan base. I can't tell people you're going to get the same opportunity. Because if you're, not, if you're not someone in boxing, if you can't talk and if you can't do numbers, you're not going to get the same opportunity. Like Conor Ben. Conor Ben's got more opportunities than most people. You can't match Conor Ben because he's coming to the table with, my dad's name is Nigel Ben. Or you've got the other ones. My dad's name is Julio Cesar Chavez. My dad's name is Chris, Chris Eubank. So I'm saying you're not, you're not going to get the same opportunities. It's not realistic. So I'm, so I'm sorry if I'm going on about this, but I just, from a, a deep sort of, I'm a deep thinker, that's just rubbish. I don't like it when people say that anyone can achieve success. No, no they can't. There's limits. There's limits to what you can and can't do. You know, but I've, I've my opinion i don't know i mean, i think i'm more open-minded i think it's hard work if you don't have the right connection i think it's possible but it all depends on your mindset and what you want to sacrifice no i disagree but continue don't like, sorry if i'm interrupting it's I mean, let me say very quickly no but let me say very quickly a quick question sorry to interrupt 
can an average person, I, I, I'm going to answer the question. To me, an average person, you're not going to achieve the same success as David Beckham's son or Beyonce, what's her name? Uh, Beyonce and Jay's, oh, is it Blue Ivy, their daughter? Something like that. But Beyonce and Jay-Z have got a daughter, Blue Ivy, who... Um, so I'm saying, here's the question. To me, you're not going to achieve the same success as them. It's not impossible, but it's very, very, very difficult because you're not going to get the same opportunities in life as these sort of people. So let me ask you the question. If you're like a just a normal person, normal background, can you achieve the same success realistically as David Beckham's son? Based on numbers, no, no, because he has connections, very really rich and famous. Based on numbers, no. Well, but why I say to that, it's possible, but it's unlikely because based on numbers and based on connections and based on what he has and the status and he has the right connections, he has the Beckham name. Yes, but I, the thing, my 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 um, opinion, the average person does have the right, does have the you know the mentality of you know pushing himself to the limit. All I'm trying to say, I'm not saying anybody can achieve success, but I just think it's hard work for the average person. But I think I think it's, it's just, just hard work, much much more harder. There's just going to be limits to it. And I take your YouTube channel. I mean, but it's just it's going to be difficult for you to. Because I, 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 I keep using myself as an example, but it's, it's not just myself, but you're going to have to go up and compete against all these different people. Coogan's got 700,000 subscribers. You know, he's been doing it over 10 years. I mean, how long is it going to take you to get to these kind of numbers? Um, and it's not just them. It's not just the established ones. But then you've got all the upcoming channels. You know, I've seen channels in the last sort of, there's, a, there's one called Women's Fight News, also Women's Boxing News or Fight News. They've been around for a year. It's basically two women that are doing the interviews. And I'm guessing because they're women, they've managed to get interviews with a lot of women. So, you know, like Ebony Bridges, Katie Taylor and so on. So, you know, it's, it's difficult for you. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible for you to become the number one interview channel. It's not impossible but it's going to be very, very difficult, you know, because you're going to have to, especially where you work full time, but you're going to have to take on all these other channels. Why are people going to come to your channel? Because people have been watching Coogan for 10 years. They've been watching Michelle said for however long. So for some random guy to come, you know, so yeah, but you know, I've, I've, I've said, I've said the points that I need to, like, look, anyone can achieve success, but the point, I think, I think I'm as say, well, because but... what inspired me as well, is that the YouTube channel was Adi Adelapo, because he came a long way, he became, he, he took him a long, long time to get where he's at, he came from literally nothing, he came from Senate Furniture to becoming a commentator for Sky Sports, for, um, um, for um, The Zone, as well as Talk Sports, so he's come a long way, so it's possible, because Adi did it, he, 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 he wasn't from. A, he came from a poor family. He came from the hood. He was um, he was homeless. He was unemployed. He, he did a lot. He did hard work. And he got hard, hard work. So he inspired me to you know just you know your dreams are, are hard to achieve, but they are possible as long as you got the right mentality. I was oh, yeah, yeah, the right mentality. Oh yeah, I'm not saying people can't achieve success, but I'm saying the limit. Oh, because you're saying because he's okay. Some people have you know. You know, better, you know, better connection. That's why there's limits on success. What I'm saying, I say is, there's limits. Okay, I'll give you an example of what I mean. In my opinion, your channel, I think, I, I don't think it comes across as rude or anything. I would say it's never going to become as big as IFL. In my, I could be wrong. It's just going to take you just too much time and effort. Too lot. You work full time. So you work full time, don't you? Yes. So you can't go to press conferences. Press conferences are, they have, they're like 12, 1 o'clock. Even if you do, okay, I interviewed Eddie Hearn in September. That video's run about 1,000 views since September. When Coogan interviews Eddie Hearn, it gets 70,000 views in, in a few hours to put into context. So even, even if you do interview people, you're just not going to do the same numbers. People are not going to click onto your channel, you know. 
But I, 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 just, I guess I'm going on and on. So, but the main point, I'm to, look, anyone can achieve success, but I just, there's just limits. There's limits to success. And remember, you're having to compete against other people. So it's going to be difficult to stand out. You know, and it was the same for me though. Like if I was to just, if I was just stuck to interviewing people, there would be a limit to, to my success because I'm just doing the same interviews everyone else is. So it's going to be difficult. But where my channel stands out, oh, this is the last thing I'll say. I've I've recently sparred Liam Williams and Kel Brook. Once I've sparred like another twenty people, I assume my channel is going to be a lot bigger. To me, that's if I was just doing interviews, my channel wouldn't be as big. But if I spar people like Katie Taylor and Josh Warrington and so on, it's going to help my channel grow a lot more. You know, so um, but even then, I'm I'm not saying it'll be as big as Coogan's, but I'll just finish on that note anyway. I respect everyone. I wish you well. I wish Coogan well. I'm not jealous of anyone. I'm just trying to do my thing. It's like when I go to school or when I go to college or when I go to work. I'm not jealous of anyone. I'm just there for me. No, I'm just do my thing, well, finish. What's go, your, go what's home. your apart from also you know, getting, you know, getting more interviews and sparring? What's your in terms of new resolution? This uni thing. What what, what you thought about? What course you're gonna do at uni? What degree? What do you wanna? What, what school you going you can, to? What you think of in terms of uni? What's your plans of uni? Economics. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can. Which uni you gonna go into? You think about staying local? You think go to Manchester? Which uni? You got, you got your sight eyes on? Yeah, um, yeah, either Manchester, just, yeah, there's different options, Manchester or London School of Economics. I might, I'll probably stick to London, I guess, because obviously London, there's a lot more going on. Um, it, it saves you cost and travelling. It saves you, you know, you know, less money to spend on, you know, travelling and, you know, a lot of stuff. Well, all I'll say to anyone watching this, and same for you, just just do your best in life. Just set yourself goals and go for it. And don't worry about if people say you can't do it. Just prove them wrong. Like everyone's entitled to their opinion, but just just go for it. You know, challenge yourself in life. You know, just just try your best. Absolutely. Anyways, you know, no, 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 we talk a lot now, a lot. How much? Almost an hour. I'm just on over an hour. Oh, it's got to be over an hour. Over over an hour. We always have a, the long conversation, you and I. Anyways, um, you take care. Uh, Till next time. Have a good weekend. You too, Yami. All right, bye now.